What up, what up, everybody, and welcome to a very weird Let's Play along with Genghis Kron. It's been a while since we've done one of these, and since we're just out from Christmas, uh, I'm recording this on Christmas Eve, actually, I figured we would play a weird uh, the holiday-themed game, so I was looking through my uh, Steam library. And I randomly came across this. It looks fucking weird. I don't play dating sims. I didn't play the first version of this since this is the sequel. So I figured I'm the perfect candidate to jump into this. So let's go ahead and see if I can get this full screen and everything. Alright, we're back in. I had to change how I had this set up. But we are back in and... After I rearrange where I have, there we go. So we are going to go ahead and jump into this dating sim. Like I said, I don't play dating sims. I don't even know if I've, I probably have played a dating sim. Um, I don't know if I can think of one off the top of my head. I definitely have. Oh, Leisure Suit Larry, I guess, if you count that, which you shouldn't. Um, I'm sure there are better examples, but I'm sure there was some like weird, shitty Pokemon ones or something I played sarcastically. Ironically, I mean. But anyway, we're... Oh, God, this is in 4-3. I just realized... That's actually, that's not even 4-3. Weird. Uh, Winter in Fairbrook, the flower shop. This game looks awful, so I literally just wanted to jump into it and just try to figure out what the fuck we're going to do with this game. So I don't know how long this is going to go. This might be one of multiple that we do. I might play this for 20 minutes and want to kill myself and bail. I don't know. So let's go ahead and start off Winter in Fairbrook, the flower shop. By the way, I'm drinking on a winter lager. And I most, oh god, this music is so, so gay. Um, drinking a winter lager. Oh, okay, I was like, is that fucking poster spelled wrong? Nope, it's cut off. Uh, yeah, drinking on a winter lager. I just smoked a hash of some waxless, which is fantastic. And I also have some uh, Mars OG as well as some, uh, what the fuck is the other one? Girl Scout cookies. And I don't mean the food, so. Now, let's see. I race upstairs, one hand firmly on the railing, so I don't slip on the bits of melting snow left by the other students who have passed this way. As soon as I reach my room, I throw myself onto the bed and let out a huge sigh. I'm free. The first semester of college is finally over. It's a pretty good feeling, isn't it? I should get different uh, voices for this. My roommate Clara grins as she zips up a warm jacket. I'm heading out for a jog. Welcome. Want to come along? I shake my head before burying my face in my pillow. No thanks. I mumble into the pillow. School may be over for the semester, but I still have a million things that I want to take care of. Huh? Like what? My parents want me to get a job over the winter break. They think it'll teach me responsibility or something. I roll over and stare at the ceiling like a dick. I was so caught up in homework and finals, I totally forgot. I didn't even think about it until just now. Look at that. That is pretty much an emoticon she's got going right there. I wonder if you can see my mouse. Huh. I wonder if you'll be able to. That'll be interesting. Clara laughs and grins at me. Is that all? That's oddly a million things. Don't laugh at me like that. It's a big deal. Why am I doing it the other way? My voice should be should be the gruffly one, right? And her voice should be regular? Oh well. Wait, should, we, should I switch that now? I should make a decision here. Let's take a drink. Should I switch it? I think her voice should actually be the gruff one, right? I should be like, the, hey guys. It's totally cool. If I don't get a job, my parents... <laughs> that's going to kill my voice. If I don't get a job, my parents say they're going to take my new car back. That's totally unfair. Where am I supposed to get a job now? I don't even have a resume, and I absolutely refuse to be a waitress. Damn, because that would have probably been a funner game. I know, it's a big deal. I just think I have a solution for you. I suddenly perk up. A solution? You can get me a job? <laughs> of course I can. You, As long as you're okay with a little bit of manual labor on my labia, <laughs> you can get it. My name is Clara. Ugh, I'll take anything, as long as I'm not serving food. <laughs> I left that, I left that joke one. Well, I don't know if I can guarantee that much. 
but it's really not such a big deal. My friend of mine runs a small flower shop back in my hometown. <laughs> Accents wandering. And? And she's been having a lot more work than she can handle lately. I thought you were from Fairbrook. Isn't, this place kind of, isn't that place kind of small? It's minuscule. Claire doesn't seem too fond about her hometown. <laughs> I can tell by the fucking frown that she's got on. Not much business could... Oh, cheers. How much business could a flower shop... T oh, god damn it. Cheers. How much business could a flower shop in a place the size of Fairbrook get? Well, most of the business comes from out of state. She ships flowers across the country these days. Wow, how'd that happen? Turns out, the brother of one of the farmers in Fairbrook is some... Oh, that's Clara. Turns out one of the brothers in Fair... Oh, brother of one of the farmers in Fairbrook is some hotshot businessman from L.A. with serious marketing skills. <laughs> She's starting to get a speech impediment because I'm getting drunk. Uh-oh, his son did something in San Francisco, maybe? I can't tell you. It's a long story. Kind of impossible to explain all in one go. I see. Anyways, this is a holiday season. She swamped me with orders. <laughs> I don't know what this accent is. She says she can use the other hand around the shop. <laughs> I can't go to Fanbrook because I'm training across the country team. But I bet she'd be happy to have your help. You mean it? She really gave me a job and I'm not gonna get to do this accent anymore? Of course, I'll call her up and tell her you're interested. She's starting into uh, Josh Myers from the Comedy Store. Is that right, Josh Adam Myers, one of those? I left out of, <laughs> much love. I left out of bed and throw my arms around Clara. Clara, thank you so much, you're the best roommate ever. She grins. Yeah, I know. She pulls out her cell phone, hits the number on speed dial. Let me just call and talk about it. She waits a few moments as the phone rings. Hey, Susanna, it's Clara. Yup, I'm doing fine. Hey, about that thing we talked about. I can't really make it, but my roommate says she's happy to help. Tomorrow, wow, uh, Clara puts the receiver and whispers to me. Oh, God. Oh, uh, sure, tomorrow. I respond for a fully comprehended question. Clara grins and turns back to the phone. She says she'll be there. Great. All right. Oh, God. She just keeps talking. All right, have fun. Say hi to everyone for me, okay? Later. Looks like it's even busier than I thought. Susanna says if I can make it there by tomorrow, that would be great. Uh, yeah, sure. Cool. Claire grabs an old sheet of math homework and scribbles an address across the back. That's the place you have to be then. Anyway, I'm heading out. See ya. With a small wave, she heads out, shutting the door behind her. Whew. I throw back my uh, I throw myself back on my bed in relief. Actually God damn it. I hate reading out loud. I don't know why I always do these to myself. I throw myself back on the bed in relief. I actually have a job. What a miracle. However, even as I feel myself relax, reality starts creeping in on me. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? What am I even supposed to be doing? I never worked at a flower shop before. What if I screw up? What did Clara mean when she said she couldn't get in tea if I'd be serving food? I remember Clara saying Fallbrook is pretty tiny. They get internet there at least, right? How am I even supposed to be out there? Oh man, why do I never think ahead? I roll over and bury my face in my pillow again. Maybe I'll worry about that again this later. Oh my god, she just keeps talking on the same page with the same music in the background. After a couple hours of trying to fall asleep, I finally drag myself out of bed and switch on my laptop. Oh, God damn it. No music change, no background change as of yet. I type the ad. Oh, God. I type the address that Claire gave me into Map Searcher. Good one, y'all. It's only a couple hours away if I take the highway. Although, last time I tried the highway, I nearly totaled my car. Bagels. Shout out to my one friend that no one would know. Oh well, fastest route is fastest. Might as well take it. I print out the directions and send a short email to my parents saying I found a job in Fairbrook. 
That should be fine. I'll probably leave tomorrow, but it's still early evening, so I don't have to worry about it too much yet. I'll log into the game site and spend a few hours popping bubbles, lining up blocks, and mashing monsters. The hours speed by faster than I expect. You still up? Clara enters, looking tired, but pleased with herself. Her face is flushed red from running outside in the cold. She looks surprised to see me awake. I look outside the window. The sky is already dark. Yeah, what's up? Oh, wait, wrong one. Yeah, what's up? Nothing. I thought you'd want to get to sleep early. It's a pretty long drive to Fairbrook. Eh, it should be fine. You say so. She shrugs. See you in the morning, I guess. Yeah, see ya. I reply, distracted. It barely registers with me as Clara gets ready for bed. I finally glance down at the clock on my computer. Two in the morning? Oh no. I glance at the random clothing and books scattered around across the dining room floor. Drive floor. I haven't even started packing yet. I rush around the room, scooping up all my clothes and other belongings. Jesus. This just keeps going. I get it. Yeah, you put your fucking clothes in the thing. Half my clothes aren't even washed yet. Guess I can wash them when I get there. Sure. Whatever, bro. Put the fucking clothes in the thing. Oh, it always feels like I'm doing everything at the last... It's, it, they just keep going. Nothing is happening. They just keep blabbing. Finally feel... Wait, I finally get everything packed, and I rush to print out directions to Fairbrook. Looks like my parents have written an email back to me. I glance over at it quickly. They want to know what sort of job it is. I quickly type in flower shop and hit the reply button before rushing back to my packing. By the time I'm done, the sun's already coming up. Guess I have no choice. I drag my suitcase. <laughs> this chick. Yeah, I drag my suitcase out to my car and toss it in the trunk with a groan. What a way to start winter break! Oh yeah, scene change, everybody. We're gonna smoke a bowl. I believe this is the Mar. No, this is the. This is definitely the Girl Scout cookies. Cheers. Well, I expected a lot more traffic due to the holidays, but I guess everyone's heading out to the airports now. This game just doesn't want you to talk to anybody. It wants to be the loneliest simulator of all time. We are 14 minutes in and all we've talked to is Clara over and over again without any decision making. All I, this is basically a clicking simulator right now. This is fucking less satisfying cookie clicker so far. I situate myself into the one of the middle lanes of the highway and zip along without any interruptions. Man, this is boring. I wish I at least had my MP3 player to entertain me, but naturally it's stuff in my suitcase along with my clothes. After a few hours, I pull off to an exit and find myself driving through a quaint little town. Is this Fairbrook? I glance down at the printed instructions. Nope, looks like I still have a ways to go. When I look back at the road, I realize I've drifted into another lane. Jesus, eep. I quickly serve to avoid an oncoming truck. Jesus! Driver honks at me and gives me a nasty glare. I guess I should probably keep my eyes on the road. Scene change, take a drink. The next two hours are much more eventful and I finally roll into Fairbrook. Wow, this place is even smaller than I thought it would be. I always thought Clara was exaggerating. Clara was exaggerating when she talked about how small her hometown was, but this place really is tiny. Hmm, the library. Well, it looks like a general store. I'm guessing that small shop with all the flowers in the window is the flower shop. Cheers. Pull up in front of the flower shop and idle for a moment. A front door swings open and a young woman with blonde curls hurly, hur, hurries out with a smile on her face. God damn it. Natalie! I'm not going to do that voice. I need to figure out something. Um, let's see. I turn off the engine and slump back to my seat. Ugh, I made it. The woman knocks on the window and I swing my car door open slowly. A sudden gust of frigid air fills the car. I wish I had remembered to wear a jacket, but naturally it's in my suitcase instead of on me. Hi. I roll my head back to gaze down, dolefully up at her. She looks incredibly chipper, especially for how cold it is outside. Susanna, right? That's right. I'm so glad you could make it. Clara told me you'd be coming. Yeah, well, I'm here. Oh my. Susanna steps a lot. <clears throat> Dang it. Susanna steps to the side to allow me to exit the car. You must be so cold. Why don't you come inside? 
I never thought you'd ask. I dart into the flower shop and sigh in relief as soon as I enter the warm building. There's so much unnecessary dialogue happening. Like, oh, here, let me... Oh, I wait for her to move so I can open the door. I open the door. She waits for me to get out. When I get out, she says, hey. I say, yeah. She says, it must be cold. I say, yeah, it's cold. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> You are stretching. I dart into the flower shop and sigh in relief as soon as I enter the warm building. Here, let me show you to your room. Susanna, a drink. Wait, we owe two. Susanna leads me to a small room in the back. It's pretty barren looking, but on the bed, the far wall looks very inviting right about now. I think I said the far wall looks pretty inviting. And what the fuck is that a picture of? That looks like an Edmund McMillan game on the wall. Or a rose. I wonder if it's one of those vagina roses that that one painter always does. Uh, right now, I'm so tired that if I had to, I'd throw a blanket over a rock and call it good. Okay. I rush towards the bed and throw myself down. Thankfully, it's much more comfortable than a rock with a blanket. Oh, yeah. That feels good. Oh, that's right. It's in my car. I don't feel like getting up, much less going out. But I should probably go get it. Susanna holds her hand up as if she can read my mind. You can sleep for now. Yeah, yeah, I'll sleep for now. I'm sure you're tired. You got that right. Just right. So it's our work tonight. Good. Shut my eyes and fall asleep before I can think anymore. No scene change, huh? I open my eyes and stare at the room. This isn't my dorm room. It's much too clean for that. I look around slowly, trying to get my bearings. Jesus, bitch, how trash were you on that drive? Do you just, like, pound pints of fucking... I'm sake, I'm guessing? I don't know. <laughs> oh, right, Fairbrook. I sit up at the south. Wow, I'm starting to get buzzed. <laughs> Only my second beer, but... Oh, that along with the dabs, I start slurring. I stand up. Damn it. <laughs> like that. I'll try this again. I sit up at the sound of a soft knock on the door. Alright, that wasn't necessarily my fault. There's a lot of weird S's right in a row there. Come in. The door opens and a young boy enters. Hey, yo! I can't tell how old he is, but I doubt he's entered college yet. He hasn't entered college, but he's about to enter Natalie, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo! Uh, hey, Natalie, right? Yeah, are you Susanna's brother? I remember Clara told me... Clara told me Susanna had a brother who stopped by her place once in a while. I always thought the brother was older, though. The guy looks more like a kid. Oh, no, that's Trent. I come by to help out sometimes. Oh, my name's Jacob. Susanna, I'm gonna check on you. Check in me? Well, dinner's ready, you say? dinner. Have I really been sleeping that long? I did crash pretty hard after the long drive here, though. Oh, oh wait. Oh, I see. Thanks. Jacob shifts uncomfortably. It's like he's doing his best not to stare at me. Something wrong? What? N no. I just saw some, something nervous. Uh, what sees him? He's a pussy. Not even once? So I guess you've never been on a girl's bed before, either. His face turns bright red. No, it didn't. Oh, I don't I don't think we should whoa who said anything about doing something together creep I was just asking <laughs> you think you should think some weird things oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to oh, just kidding full <laughs> Jacob frowns haha <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck Jacob he's a bitch that's mean <laughs> that's mean <laughs> yeah it is mean Jacob sorry you seem so easy to tease <laughs> he sighs I can't really deny that, but still not very kind to do so. <laughs> Fine, I won't do it again, Abby. Yeah. Anyway, dinner's ready, so come in over here ready. <laughs> he leaves shutting the door quietly behind him. Wow, way to go, Natalie. You've already made a bad impression on him. <laughs> still, his personality is just too adorable. I couldn't resist. Oh, shit, I missed it. Oh, wow, dinner smells fantastic. Wow, I'm starting to get into this. If I can just shit on everybody in this game, I'm in. <laughs> glad you... Wait, no, that's not her voice. What's her voice? I'm glad you... Thanks, so. 
Jacob pulls a chair for me and is not take a seat. I only have, I don't know if you guys noticed, I only have like one girl voice and like three dude voices. Wow, you're quite the gentleman. And one of them is just my voice. Wow, you're quite the gentleman. I am. Yeah, trust me, no guy I know does that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry why? I don't know, I just thought you didn't like it. Never said that. I think the world needs more gentlemen. Uh, I got it. Stannis smiles at Jacob. He, quick, he quickly looks away. Ooh, well, would you like to drink? Not I. I have Red Bull and vodka and tequila and Red Bull. I love Rebo's tea. I love Rubio's tea if you like. Ooh, fuck that up. I have a lovely Rubio's tea if you like. Or I just got some green tea loose leaf if you prefer. I f fucking, I don't even know what I did with that. I just lost the accent halfway through that and struggled with green tea loose leaf. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Yo, I got some green tea loose leaf too. It's called weed, bro. I just put it in tea. <laughs> yeah, I don't exactly know what you're talking about. Tea is tea, isn't it? Susanna laughs gently and hands me a small glass of iced tea. Not, not all teas are the same. You'll learn though. Let's we'll start with the ruby. Rubio, Ruby. Why do I have so much trouble with that? It's spelled like the fucking Takaria. <laughs> it's, they're not even a Takaria, are they? Rubios. Ruibos. No, that's why. It's not Rubios. It's Ruibos. I don't like that. Ruibos. Roybos. I sip the tea she offers me. Tastes like, well, tea. Is there supposed to be something special about this? Oh shit, I double clicked. Please, have yourself to whatever you like. I scan the table, but none of the food looks too familiar. What is it? Well, it's baked eggplant, and that's a mix of sweet potatoes and onions. You don't know what onions are? Jacob already helped himself to modest proportions of all the food. Uh, I suppose we could uh, order out for a pizza or something. I don't suppose. Order our pizza? Stan looks horrified. She does look pretty horrified. Not a idea. Any idea what they put in those things? Well, no. Exactly. They're running up a processed meat sale. Oh, here we go. Here we go, y'all. This is the Hipster Simulator 2014. I didn't realize how many leggings and sweaters there have been so far. Uh, let's see. They can't drive. She's wearing a necktie thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, they work at a plant place. This is. Oh no, you guys. This is gonna be. Wait. What's the name of their city? Isn't it Fair something? Uh, it's not Fair Trade, but it's something like that, right? You're puzzling yourself by eating all that. It's much better to eat natural food and avoid animal products. <laughs> oh man, these fucking hipster hippies are getting ridiculous. But it tastes so good. Susanna looks like she's really angry now, but Jacob speaks up before she replies. Why don't y'all stay the if it has anything? Who? Oh, that's right. He's in town right now, isn't he? Her impression softens a little. Jacob looks relieved. Who? That's right. He just drove in a few days ago. Excuse me, who? I try and stop, but I feel as if Susanna and Jacob are talking over me. Like like a Death Squad podcast. Ah, uh, sorry. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. Jacob apologizes meekly. Steve McFarlane, his uncle to owns a farm a few miles out of Fairbrook. Fairbrook, that's what it was. Had to have fair in the name though, right? You fucking hipsters. This is, oh my god. There's gonna be some shitty free trade discussions and like, oh my god. And Steve visits pretty frequently to help him take care of it and use a cook. No, but he usually brings food from out of town and he used to live in Los Angeles. I'm pretty sure two of you would probably get along. Think so? You're both from the city, aren't you? I can't distinguish their voices anymore. This is getting fucking brutal, you guys. 
I guess. Don't worry, he's really nice. I'm so tired of doing voices right now. Uh, Shia Boy vouches for this guy. He's probably pretty nice. I guess I wouldn't mind meeting him. I help myself some of the sweet potatoes and onions. The eggplant doesn't look too appetizing to me. Racist. You can go meet him tomorrow if you like. I'd take a few bites. The food isn't as bland as I thought it'd be. Still tastes weird, though. You'll have to go in the afternoon, though. Steve always works in the morning. Okay. Although, I don't know if we'll be fine with me just showing up at his door asking for food. Don't worry. I said it's very easy going. I know I skipped the accent. I'm tired of it. I hope so. I finished dinner quickly, despite the fact that I'm starving. I can't really bring myself to eat too much. Not that Suzanne's food is bad. It's just weird. Well, I'm done. I shove my plate to the side. I hope you don't mind if I go to bed early. I'm beat. Well, Susanna looks like she's using her words carefully. I'd help we go over the work procedures tonight so that you'd be ready to start tomorrow morning. Oh, right. Yeah, can we do that in the morning? I promise so. I'm a fast learner. Susanna sighs. All right. Morning it is. Oh, her f face changed at some point when I wasn't looking. Creepy. As I stand up, I remember that my suitcase is still sitting in the trunk of my car. Oops, I almost forgot my bag. Better go get it. Do you like some help? Sure. Drink. Oh, I need a beer. All right, I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I am back. I had to go grab a beer. I grabbed another Sam Adams Winter Lager out of their winter variety pack. It's one of the few ones I like out of the pack. Actually, I guess I like all of them, all right? I'm not a giant fan of uh, the white Christmas one, though. But then again, it's because I'm not a giant fan of white uh, ales. Anyway, jumping back into this. Oh, also, we are going to take a shot. So the next time somebody says something awful and annoying, we're taking a shot. I'm guessing it's going to be like right now, probably. Jacob throws on a coat and follows me outside. We walk to my car, stepping carefully on the thin layer of snow that covers the ground. It's chilly outside, and with every step I take, the snow crunches slightly before melting under my feet. It's really cold out here. Duh, I'm master of the obvious, apparently. Obviously. Jacob doesn't respond. Thin layer of frost is formed on my car. I shove the key into the trunk's lock and peel the trunk open. Bits of frost and snow slide down the trunk's surface, catching on the rear window of my car. Jacob reaches in and pulls out my suitcase. Uh, he stumbles back a few paces on the frozen ground, setting himself carefully before straightening himself. You okay? Yeah, just a little heavy. Sorry about that. I shoved my entire room in there. Jacob drags my bag up to the room and leaves it outside the doorway. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Jacob beams at me. He looks tired, but he still manages to smile. I don't like Jacob. See you tomorrow. Yep, night. Shut the door quickly and get changed and leap into bed. What a long day. My stomach rumbles a bit. I probably should have eaten more dinner, but it was just too different. I wish I had at least thought to pack some snacks. Looking at my suitcase, oops, I twitched. Not exactly a stunning start to my winter break, but I guess it's okay. She, that's, she just says that over and over again. I shut my eyes and fall asleep instantly. My eyes flicker open slowly. Is it morning? I inspect the plain blue walls of the tiny bedroom as I stretch. Oh, wow. I can scroll back up with the mouse. Nice. Whoa. That was abrupt. <laughs> There's a quiet knocking. Wait, what happens if I go back up? Oh, yeah, remix. Remix. I can figure out how to break this game. All right, there's a quiet knocking on my door. And I'm jamming out now. Just the jams, y'all. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it going. Coming. Shuffle the door and pull it open sleepily. That's my chaser. Not a lady, you're right, Some sweet Diet Hansen's 
Bleh. Diet Hansen's Black Cherry. I'm sure this shot is going to help me speak a lot better. So cheers. Man, that's good together. That was a shot of Admiral Nelson's rum. Which is fucking amazing with this Diet Black Cherry Hansen's. I'm not even going to lie to you right now. Uh, ready for what? My groggy mind still trying to figure out where I am. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done today. It's already 8 a.m. Oh, right work. So, Susanna looks distressed. Please come to the shop as soon as you're ready. Susanna shuts the door and I stare blankly at the floor for a few seconds. I glance over at the bed. It looks so inviting. Couldn't hurt to lie down in it for just a few seconds. Not I! Susanna standing me by, by my bed. She definitely doesn't look happy. Huh? Susanna sighs. I'm running behind on errands today, so you have to fill in for me. She hands me a cloth lunch bag. Take this to the library, please. What is it? It's lunch for some friends. I bring them food every day, but I can't afford to leave the shop today. Wait, I'm a delivery girl now? Why don't you have Jacob do it? Jacob is currently with his family. He doesn't come by until late afternoon. If you had woken up earlier, if you had woken up earlier, you wouldn't have to do this, but I've got orders to fill, and no one can, here can do it except me. I grudgingly accept the lunch from Susanna. Fine, I get it. Sorry, I was just tired. Whoa, I right clicked, sorry. Yeah, let's actually save this. Susanna looks like she wants to respond, but she just sighs. Please hurry. I dig through my luggage and pull out a coat and scarf. At least this time, I'm smart enough to remember that. Or maybe I'm just taking my entire... Oof. Cheers. Or maybe I'm just taking my time because I don't like being dragged out of bed. Whoa, finally made it to the flower shop. As I trudge through the flower shop, I glance at the clock on the wall. It's 11 a.m. Whoops. Okay, maybe she does have a reason to wake me up. She didn't have to be so mean about it, though. I kick at the snow as I wander around across the icy streets of the library. It's only a few blocks away, but she really can't just deliver it herself. The library is small, but cozy. A nice place for a nap. Really, bitch? Are you, are you narcoleptic? Hello, may I help y'all? She's gotta be the librarian. Look at those glasses. She's definitely a librarian. Uh, hey, I got this lunch from Susanna. Oh, of course. Thank you very much. My name's Marion, the librarian. Can it? Ha! Marion, the librarian? Yeah, obviously, bitch. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Her response is quick and practiced. I guess she heard that joke before. You must be a new girl helping some Santa with her shop for sure. Yeah, I'm Natalie. Although I haven't actually done anything yet except bring lunch. Well, it's appreciated. Ah, I right clicked again, sorry. Did I hear someone mention lunch? A young man with dirty blonde hair appears behind me without warning. Eee! Whoa, you okay? Uh, yeah, fine. Just wasn't expecting you. Sorry about that. He leans down to get a better look at my face like a fucking weirdo. <laughs> oh, you're the new girl. Natalie, right? Chris mentioned you were coming in. Susie? Does he mean Susanna? Why did I say Chris? That was weird. Where did that come from? Oh, God. I right clicked again. <laughs> this is going awful, guys. That shot clearly didn't affect this at all. I'm Trent, by the way. Susie's my sister. Trent, right. Clara mentioned that Susanna had a brother. She neglected to include the part where he's incredibly cute, though. Um, I try to respond, but I can't really think of anything useful to say. Marion. Trent looks away from me. He's staring right at me. You just said he looked away from me. He started me right in the fucking eyeballs. Yeah. 
Your editor's on the phone right now. He wants to talk about the contest. Oh, of course. Marion hurries off to the back of the library. Editor? Trent grins proudly. Yep, Marion's a pro writer. Poet, actually. She's kind of a guest judge for a poetry competition in a literature magazine right now. Kind of a big deal. I see. Nah, just professional writer, but someone good enough to be a judge. She's really impressive. That's really cool. Oh, do you like poetry? Shoot. Uh, poetry? I don't know the first thing about it. Well, except I think it's kind of boring. Um... <laughs> I'm afraid I don't really get it most of the time. Poetry's too confusing for me. I'm better with people just saying things straight out. Fucking damn it. Ha! <laughs> I hear you there. Honestly, I can't understand a word of it either. Really? Then why are you here? I work here. You work here? Well, sorta. Mary is really busy with the writing, so I help her out at the library from Tom Tom. Uh, that's nice of you. Isn't it? He laughs. Ha! I'm such a nice guy, huh? Well, I won't keep you in your niceness any longer. Have fun at work. You too. He seems much too cheerful for someone at work. I doubt he's here for other reasons. No doubt. Whoops. I go ahead and the back of the library. Marion's still on the phone. I don't think she'll mind if I leave. Well, that was interesting. I made a complete fool of myself in there, though. Across the street from me, I see a small general store. Hmm, Susanna didn't say I had to be back right away, did she? Kind of want to buy a, a beer and some smokes because it was a long ass drive and I've been sleeping. Couldn't hurt if I stop in for a, a whoa. Couldn't hurt if I just pop in for a short look. Take a look. It's in a pop in. A beer uh, and a burrito? I don't. It was the world's worst breeding rainbow gem. That was terrible. Lo. Put my head in the store and look around. It's fairly small, but the shelves are stocked high with pretty much everything. That looks pretty empty from what I've, I'm saying. Anyone here? I sure hope so. A young man with neatly combed hair and glasses appears from behind the shelf. Looking for something in particular? Uh, no, just browsing. He approaches me and looks me up and down carefully. From the look in his eyes, he seems like he's processing something. Finally, he arrives at his conclusion. Haven't I seen you before? Yeah, I'm Natalie. Ah, of course, the new girl working for Susanna. Ugh, does everything in this part... Does everyone in this place have to refer to me as the new girl? Damn it, I'm starting to stumble on stuff so bad because of the drinking. Yeah, that'd be me. He doesn't seem to notice the hint of annoyance in my voice. This music is just kicking in the background. Well? Yes. This is the part where you tell me your name. My name is Ryan. Nice to meet you, Ryan. I'm sure the same is true of you. He nods and smiles. Well, it's by the front door. What is? The supplies, Susanna's order. You're here to pick them up, aren't you? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure, why not? I shrug. Maybe Susanna will forgive me for this morning if I bring her whatever this is. I'm not in the real dang it. Let's save again. I'm not really in the mood to leave so soon, though. So, um, do you live here? To some extent. What do you mean? I attend college out of state, but I reside with my family here when school is not in session. That's cool. What are you studying? Biology. Oh, that's interesting. You gonna be a biologist? He shrugs. I don't know. It's just an interesting field of study. Damn it. I feel like I'm interrogating him. He doesn't seem interested in sharing information unless I ask him directly. Well, I, I can't... Dang it. I'm just making up words and, like, fucking not reading anything right. The music is fucking jamming, though. Can't tell if he's annoyed or not, though. In fact, 
He doesn't seem to care either way. Mm, let's stick around a little longer. I can't really think of any out, anything else to ask him, so I turn my attention to the store. This is a nice store. Is it? Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff in it. Brian doesn't answer. He seems to be staring at me. Something wrong? I don't know. I'm just wondering why you're still here. Doesn't Susanna need her supplies? I guess. I just don't feel like going back right away. Oh! You're working right now. It's not a vacation. He looks irked. Fine, fine. I get it. I'm going. Why is everyone around here so uptight? I pick up the package beside the door and make a great display of lugging it out. Ryan doesn't seem that impressed. I kick open the door and head out. I carefully walk around the icy ground. The box I'm carrying is so large I can barely see my feet. Just all the box, bro. I'm just covering my feet. Fucking. I stare at the ground intently, placing each step with precision. I step on a particularly icy patch of ground and my foot slips out from under me. Eek. Whoa. A boy with brown hair steps forward and places a hand on my shoulder to help, help steady me. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, thanks for that. You look like you could use a little help. He points at the box I'm carrying. Points at the boxes. He's like, yo, you need help with that box? Fucking so dumb. You want me to carry that? Uh, yeah, please. I quickly dump the box. Just dump that box into his outstretched hands. I fucking just dumped it. It's nice to meet you. My name's Natalie. Oh, you must be. Yeah, the new girl, I know. He blinks and bursts out laughing. Actually, I was gonna say Claire's roommate. Oh? My name's Steve. I'm not ex My name's Steve. I'm not exactly a fair book resident either. So I don't know so I know how it feels to be the outsider. Steve, name sounds familiar. Susanna and Jacob were talking about you last night. You're from Los Angeles, right? Sure I am. Drove here to see my uncle as often as I can. He had a heart attack last summer, so he hasn't been able to do much work on the farm anymore. It's nice of you to come help. It's the least I can do. He's like a father to me. Oh, is your father gone? Steve grins wryly. He's not dead, if that's what you mean. But he's never really been there for me. Shocking, L.A. We're trying to make good now, but it's awkward, you know? He pauses for a moment to shift the weight of the box in his arms. Just fucking shifting the box. Just fucking the weight of it. Just shifting. Oh, well. I'm sure it all works out in time. What about your parents? What are they like? Mm, eh, I'd rather not talk about it. I stick out my tongue. It's their fault I'm stuck out here with some job I don't even want. It's not as bad as you're making it out to be, Natalie. Steve looks a little hurt. I just fucking making everybody angry. I don't know. I'll have to say, if I have a right to say this, but I think you shouldn't be so resentful. I sigh. Yeah, I guess. At least they only said I have to get a job during break. And they're okay with you living out here in Fallbrook? Oh, it's Fairbrook, and I'm not actually sure. <laughs> kind of sent them a rushed email, but I don't know if they wrote back. Why don't you ask Susanna if you can borrow her computer? Um, I don't know if Susanna likes me very much right now. He grins. Did you get the natural foods lecture? Well, yeah, <laughs> but I also slept, this, slept in this morning, and so far I haven't been... Wow, cheers. Well, yeah, but I also slept in this morning, and so far, I haven't actually been much of a help at all. Oh, then we better get you back to the shop as quickly as we can. He ste his steps quicken, and I hurry to catch up. When we arrive at the shop, he places the box back in my arms. Just fucking gives me that box back after he took it. Well, I actually came to town to pick up something from the store, so I'll be going now. He smiles and waves. If you ever want to hang out sometime, just drive down the main road until you get to the farmhouse. That's where I'm staying. Cool, yeah, I'll take you up on that offer. 
See you around, Natalie. See ya. I turn to face the front door of the shop. I sure hope Susanna isn't still mad at me. The deep breath, I push the door open and enter. Natalie, I'm glad you're back. I was wondering if Susanna stops short. Oof. Susanna stopped short at the sight of the large box in my hand. You already got it? You mean a package for you at the general store? I smile proudly. That's all hair? Susanna looks relieved. Thank you. I lay it on the ground carefully. What's what's in it anyway? Packing materials for shipping out the flowers? A special order biodegradable packaging made from recycled products. Hippies also can smoke it if I leave it outside. Of course she does. Why am I not surprised? Shocking! Of course, if you have to grow the flowers first before you can pack them. I'll show you how to pack the flowers right now and we'll worry about growing them tomorrow. Fuck yeah, we're finally doing something you guys! And that is where we're going to wrap this episode, because we can't actually do anything in a dating sim. It's all me reading with terrible stuff. So that is part one. I don't even know if this is going to be a part one. Actually, you know what? We will come back and play some more of this, just for fucks. Like, why not, right? Like, uh, we got to at least see what the action element of this game is. So we will call this part one of this game. But... This has been a complete shit show. Um, oh my god. It's just such a weird... Yep, we just saved right there. See, look, you can actually see it's Christmas uh, Eve when I'm recording this. But that was Winter in Fairbrook, The Flower Shop, Part 1. Uh, this fucking game is ridiculous. So, look for a Part 2 of this coming up, maybe. Also, we will have... Um, Viscera cleanup detail. I've never played any of those games uh, and I just recently in a bundle got the Santa one uh, Santa's revenge or something like that. So we are going to go ahead and play that uh, just as kind of a wrap-up Also, I don't know if before this or after this was fork Parker's Holiday hike, but we also have that video that either just came out or is about to come out So look for that as well and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody happy holidays and until next time, go do something decadent. You can find this game on Steam, I guess. I don't know. I did, evidently. I think I got it in a bundle. <laughs> don't... I, I must have gotten it in the same bundle that I got the Santa one or something. I don't know where the fuck I got this thing, but... Until next time, everybody, go do something decadent. And don't play this dating sim. Late! <laughs>